Hello and welcome to the next episode of my FM sound design tutorial using the Sonicware Liven XFM. So far we've looked at the basic features of the synthesizer and how to design sounds using the morphing engines. We've looked at in general how the FM edit mode functions and today finally we're going to design an FM patch. Let's start by turning the device on. So uh, I have the panel overlay on, but I know that that is the function key. Uh, I pressed function edit, I hit okay. Now we are in FM edit mode. This is the default patch, I'm going to hit init. So now we have an init patch. Let's have a look at where the sound is coming from. So let's look at the mixer, operator one, full level one, two, seven, operator two, three, four, all level zero. Okay, so operator one, you may ask yourself now, well, in order to get FM, don't we need to be modulating the frequency of this oscillator with another oscillator? The answer is not strictly. Why? Because we have the capacity to feedback. We have operator one feedback available on this knob as a secondary function, or we may select operator one and select operator one receive level and that allows us to set a feedback amount. Um, moving across the panel, I'm imagining since we're only using one operator I probably want a relatively simple sound. I'm imagining something like a pluck. Uh, we'll go back to adjusting things like scaling, time and velocity sensitivity after we do these basic adjustments. So the first thing we want to do basically is the envelope. If we listen for now, onset, retain at full level, and instantaneously drop off at release. Okay, so we have got two parameters for each envelope stage. First level, second time. First we're going to think about what the levels should look like. This envelope proceeds from zero to the attack level in the attack time. It proceeds from the attack level to the decay level in the decay time, from the decay level to the sustain level in the sustain time, and it will stay at the sustain level once the sustain time expires if you keep a note down. And then finally, in the release time, it will drop from whatever level it was at to the release level, which is often zero, but not necessarily. So if I want to pluck, in my head I'm thinking, well, a plucked string has no sustain, so I'm going to set the sustain level to zero. If I play the sound now, all we hear is a tiny click. Why is that? Because the default attack time is very short and the default decay time is very short. So what's happening here, and the default sustain time is very short. So what's happening here is the sound is raising up, dropping down and disappearing. We won't be able to change that until we proceed to adjusting the times. So from the decay perspective, well, I'm imagining that while I hold the key down, no matter how long I hold it, I want it to decay to zero. I don't want it to retain any level. So just like sustain is zero, I set decay to zero. An attack level, the initial volume level, 127, makes perfect sense to me. So at the moment, we have the tiniest little click, not very useful to us. Let's move to page two, and now we will adjust the times of the individual phases. So we're adjusting the attack time first. Notice at the moment the decay time is, is zero, so it's dropping straight back down. I'm picturing that for a pluck, I probably want a very short attack, but maybe non-zero. Sounds okay. So now we're gonna set the decay time. So this is how long it takes from reaching that maximum to drop down while the key is held. So I'm imagining here the possibility that while holding the key we get a longer release, um, a decay, but when we release the key it stops abruptly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a release time different to the decay time. So if the release time and the decay are equal, whether I hold the key down or not, 
we get the same roughly length of envelope. Instead, what I'm going to do is the release time I'm going to decrease. Okay, so that sounds pretty interesting to me. Um, at the moment, we're only working with a sine wave, which is the waveform that all the FM operators output. I would like a little bit more timbral interest, so I'm going to look at setting the feedback level. I could do this uh, using the receive levels here, but there is a dedicated button. So I'm in page two, and I'm going to adjust it here. So I quite like that sound now. Okay. Remember that this synthesizer also has a filter. So in general, when designing sounds, I will err towards making something a little brighter than I think that I need. And then I will make it less bright going forwards. So now we want to think about velocity sensitivity. Um, velocity sensitivity is simply going to be how um, much the sound gets louder or quieter in response to velocity changes. In fact, there is always a fixed curve that goes from the maximum level down to zero. So what's happening when you adjust velocity sensitivity is you're adjusting um, whether it basically stays at maximum most of the time and only has a tiny modulation towards the bottom of that level um, near zero velocity, uh, velocity point or whether you have some continuous gradient. Um, since I'm not using a velocity sensitive keyboard, I'm just using the onboard keyboard, I'll use the velocity knob to illustrate. So you hear, you hit zero, and then as soon as we're above zero, it's a full velocity. So there's basically no um, expressiveness in the velocity here. So what I'll do is pick velocity sensitivity, and I will set a value. So let me set maximum and we'll listen. So you hear that it's relatively quiet except at the very maximum velocity level. If I set it to a low value, you'll hear that it stays light, uh, louder over a larger range of values. So I feel I feel happy with the way that's working now, so I'm going to set, I think the default velocity that it uses is 100, so I'm going to set it back to 100. So now we have velocity sensitivity. If I was playing on a velocity sensitive keyboard, I ha have an expressive dimension available to me. Another thing that I think might be interesting to adjust is the shape of the envelope, the envelope's curvature, specifically how quickly we're going to rise up in that time, do we want it to come up very quickly and then level off, or do we want to come up slowly? So um, the way we do this is with these curvature parameters. So I'm going to pick down curve. So you can hear that sound. It holds quite a lot. I'm going to turn it down. So you hear it held for a long time and then dropped. So actually, I want a higher number. So to me, that feels a little bit more natural. Uh, for the attack, it probably doesn't matter because you can't really hear the attack. But what I'll do is extend the attack time. Uh, we had it at 23. I'm going to set it much higher just so we can hear. Um, so you hear that case. It goes up very slowly. This case, it goes up quickly. So I feel like going up quickly makes more sense. I'm going to touch the attack time back down to 23. So there we go. Now you can hear the velocity affecting the sound. Um, since we only have one operator, there's no real timbral shift. It's simply an artifact of um, the velocity we play and the volume. So if I jump up to a high pitch, notice that this is still a very long sound. And in practice, that feels unnatural. 
So how are we going to compensate for that? We're going to use time scaling. If I set time scaling to maximum, hear how short it is in the upper register. So it allows us to make the sound shorter as the pitch goes up. So. Okay, so I feel like that seems to me to be a little more natural. Um, now let's listen to how loud the sounds are in the upper and lower registers here. So, um, let's go into a low register. I feel like I would like the sound to be a little louder down there. So, low gain. So you hear when I set the gain low, we're quiet in the low register. What was happening there is when I was repressing the same key while the envelope was still running, the envelope wasn't resetting. I think in the upper register maybe it's a little bit loud, so I'm going to try and turn it down. So, um, I think that basically completes the design of this sound. We have got something which is... We have something that's relatively playable um, and that we can take into and use with the other engines that I've described. We have relatively limited expressive capability for playing and the expression is predominantly going to come in when we introduce more operators but I hope this illustrates at least all of the parameters that are made available to you for a single operator and the fact that even one operator, you have some capacity to design sounds, especially if those sounds can then be played through a filter, can be modulated with an LFO, just like they can on this synthesizer. So uh, thank you for listening. And in the next episode, we will introduce a second operator and hopefully demonstrate a little bit more about what FM synthesis looks like in the real world. So thank you, and I appreciate you all watching. Bye.